Well, let's start because we have a packed agenda today and we've got so many people sharing great ideas uh, that I hope you'll learn so much. So Anin, uh, welcome, bienvenue uh, to our Climate Action Grant Showcase. So this is all about our Youth Climate Action uh, grants that the cities of Toronto has been giving our schools and they have been doing amazing things with them. Now we're only showcasing three uh, schools, but really there are tons of great things out there and we hope to get the message out a little bit more than and just one webinar. In the, as you came in, there was an entry poll. That's always great. We wanna know uh, who you are and how we can help and, and how we can cater these webinars um, uh, better to your needs. All right. The overview today, of course, we want to make sure we start with a nice warm welcome and it's great to see you. Uh, land acknowledgement, we'll, right after our land acknowledgement, we'll have Jeff McCormick from the city talk about the history of the Youth Climate Action Grants, how it came about, what are the targets that we're trying to do through these grants. And then I'll introduce you to three, uh, what we call YCAG, uh, because why not have an acronym? Um, so the Youth Climate Action Grants uh, will introduce you to three recipients and uh, go through their project. And we purposely picked uh, people from different parts of the city and different ages. And then, of course, we've got some upcoming events for you as well. So I was looking for something that really reflected um, a different view of climate change. And I came across this on the Climate Atlas. And Sherry Lyson is an artist, a mother, a grandmother, um, but interesting, she won an award for being a woman uh, in leadership positions and taking care of community. She is the fire chief um, from the Adams Lake Indian Band, which is 125 kilometers northeast of Kamloops in South British Columbia. She leads a diverse fire department with women, men, Indigenous, non-Indigenous peoples working together. And the team was formed in 2021, uh, which unfortunately, of course, was the time of the pandemic and also when the discovery of the 215 uh, unmarked graves near Kamloops Indian Residential School. But she's really quite active in reconciliation through her action and her work advancing trauma-informed fire service building community safety capacity across ages, genders, and race. On August 4th last uh, summer, you remember uh, the wildfires and you read about them. Uh, this one in Bush Creek East forced 11,000 people to flee under evacuation. And so as she reflected on this tragic event, uh, she was asked to paint her interpretation of climate change and she said she had a much different image in her head. And she had started with about eight different paintings and none of them worked the way she had envisioned. She said, I thought to pull it together and it just wouldn't come. At one point I felt it was beyond my capabilities. Then it came to me, the medicine wheel. When mankind is out of balance, everything suffers. And right now we're looking at a planet in crisis. We're experiencing extreme heat, fires, floods and destruction on a monumental level. To heal our planet, we need to heal the water. And these paintings are meant to show hope and healing. And I love the contradiction of the two images as if it's, you know, looking from different perspectives. On, and on that, we want to acknowledge that we are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. And we also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations Métis and Inuit peoples. So without any further ado, uh, Jeff, I'm going to pass it over to you. I'm going to ask Jeff to introduce himself, uh, what his role is at the city, maybe how, how you came to be there, uh, besides your illustrious film career, which doesn't exist, but yes. <laughs> and give us some background about the Youth Climate Action Grants. Thank you, Pam. Uh, don't make me ask how I started the city. <laughs> I've been here for 25 years and I can't remember that far back, <laughs> which is the fun, it's a side story, but I don't even remember applying to the city when I did end up here. But anyways, <laughs> it is an absolute pleasure to be here today to join this uh, webinar. 
Um, as Pam mentioned, I'm my name Jeff McCormick. I'm a senior environmental planner with the City of Toronto. I work for the Environment and Climate Division within the city. We're a small but powerful and ambitious group. Um, I also like to acknowledge I'm a proud parent of two TDSB students, uh, one in middle school and one in secondary school. Um, I have been managing grants for the City of Toronto for 15 years. Environmental grants, sorry, is my focus. Uh, so I am very, very uh, enthusiastic about this Climate Action Grant Program. Um, the, the ability to work specifically with students, with teachers, with schools. Um, this is a brand new grant program. We've only started in 2022. Uh, I, I'm going to give a little context for how this came about because is happening so fast. Our climate is changing fast and the city is taking rapid steps to address this. And with this partnership we now have with the TDSB, we're getting youth involved. Um, in 2021, the city uh, adopted a net zero transform TO strategy. Um, this was an ambitious um, goal setting strategy that the city was looking at to get our greenhouse gas reductions to net zero by 2040. Uh, this, we had a previously had it farther back. Everything was moved up when the city council, that is, declared climate emergency. And no one's expecting how rapidly actually everything's happening. We, I remember when I started here, we were looking at things 2050, 2060. Things are happening way faster than we expected. Um, the city is all over this net zero strategy. So I just want to say this, that we are taking steps and we are including everyone in this. And students have a role, teachers have a role, schools have a role in getting our greenhouse gas emissions down to net zero by 2040. Um, we can flip slides now. I just want to show a quick overview of where our greenhouse gas emissions, I'm not going to get into this too deep, deeply but i just want to show you this is what we have to target so if we're taking climate action we have to go after these you'll see that buildings are creating our greenhouse gases transportation primarily that's just from single vehicle or vehicle um usage from residential um, the buildings is heating this can include your homes apartments where you work uh, and like I said, where you live and waste is another thing we got to tackle too. We got to reduce the amount of waste we're producing. So I'm just showing this is the foundation and genesis of what we're trying to get projects to attack, where we're trying to make the most climate action. And I'm going to show you now in my next slide. This, you can imagine the city, we like our strategies, we like our plans. Uh, this report is you'll find it on our website is a very long and detailed plan but we have a lot of short-term goals that we're looking to attack first and a lot of these short-term goals like i said can involve students can involve schools um, this plan is going to take everybody to address to get our greenhouse gas emissions as a city down to net zero um, and as you can see in this, I like this illustration because it shows you there is things and specifically schools are called out one of them. We got to get people out of their vehicles. We have to get people walking more. We, and there's so much more students can do to encourage their families at home. Hey, let's ride our bike to school. Let's take the, uh, let's not take the car. if We have to just do a short errand. And especially for schools, what can we do to get our waste reduced? our re waste reduction, litterless lunches. It's huge. There's so much we can do as schools. So what I'm getting at here is because, yes, climate change is a huge, huge issue, but we can do very a lot of small things with students. And as students have the enthusiasm, they have the ideas, schools can lead the charge, they can inspire others. And this is why I'm so excited about the Youth Climate Action Grants, because Really, we need some inspiration. I think the students, the youth of today are where we're gonna find them. And sorry, I shouldn't leave out those champion teachers too. They're an integral part of this. So I've given a little background. So we have a climate emergency. So this is where this came up. As part of this strategy, there was, we must involve youth. When the plan was actually written, the school boards and the youth were involved in writing that original net zero strategy. And in there, okay, now how can we get the youth involved? This is how this grant program came about. And we're not talking huge dollars. This is a micro grant program. The grants, 
and what we'll fund is up to a thousand dollars so we're not looking to solve the world's problem but we're seeing what we can do at a micro level at a school level to raise awareness about how we can reduce greenhouse gases how we can educate families, other students, other schools about steps that can be taken, things that are changing. How can we mitigate the damages that are being caused by climate change? So what we've done with this program, like I said, it's up to a thousand. We've coordinated this grant program with the school year. So every September, this grant program will open. We are encouraging students. We're looking for student-led projects, but we're also encouraging students, especially high school students, to do these applications on their own. It is an online application form. It is very short and simple. Tell us what you want to do. Tell us how this is climate action. Give us a little budget, a little work plan, and tell us how you're going to spread the word and raise awareness of what you're doing. It is I tell people they can submit this application within 30 minutes. The big requirement of this program is teachers, and you're going to meet a few of them, have to be a project lead or project manager of these to work with the students and everything needs principal's approval, of course. Um, it is an easy program. We have lots of money and I like to end, I'm gonna let, we're gonna jump into learning more about some of the examples, but I just wanna share and I let everybody know there is people here, there's me, there's fellow city staff, there is eco school staff that are here to help groups work on ideas. I encourage everybody, reach out to us. If you have students or ambitious, they have ideas, come to us. Tell us what those ideas are. We're here to help you apply for this grant. And I like to add, we have lots of money to share. So we're looking for applications. We want people to come to us, apply for this grant program. The next round will be opening in September. So I encourage everybody to reach out to us at any time during the year if you have ideas and get your applications in for the next round. Thank you, Jeff. And Jeff is absolutely right. There, as much as we can give the money away, we're working with teams to do that. And so to give you a little bit of, of the TDSB background of what that looks like, um, the program was launched in 2021-22, again, with in collaboration. That's where the money comes from. And then we also have monies coming from another donor. And together, we're looking at a chunk of cash. So there's lots of money to give. That's not the issue. Um, so far, we've been able to award $332,500 in grants. And that's to 35 youth climate action applicants. And sometimes we get schools doing multiple grants. And we have an example of that here today as well. So you can have multiple uh clubs, multiple grants coming from the same uh, school. And it goes for both elementary and high school. As Jeff mentioned, we're trying to really get the students uh, to self-direct the grant. Um, so we're trying to make it as easy as possible. But uh, but we love the, the teacher leads who really scaffold it for their uh, students as well. So we've had 27 elementary and eight secondary schools engaged in climate projects. And to give you a sense of what kind of projects uh, we've been able to fund so far, uh, food gardening tops the list. Of it, it, It's so great to see food, food waste, food gardening, uh, balcony gardening, hydroponic gardening, uh, container gardening, gardening to go. Uh, it, it's pretty amazing. Uh, climate change literacy and living sustainability. We've got eco fairs, uh, games, a gamification, video games to teach climate change. Our art installation films, um, and some of you are in the room that have done this. Fashion and clothing, although it could be with waste and sustainable, it's it's actually done a lot of clothing swaps. We've got a group working on uh, uh, repairing and seamstress uh, work, or or work. I was going to say tailoring, uh, clothing swaps, upcycling, lots of presentations. Active transportation, as Jeff said, we want people out of their cars. So that looks like bike racks, repair hubs, uh, bike clubs, uh, bike rodeos, uh, workshops, Culture Link has been helping out. Zero waste and uh, waste aversion is also another big uh, bucket where a lot of things go on. We're teaching people about the green bin. As you know, food waste is all together. If it were a country, it'd be number three in climate emissions. So if you wanna do something active, food waste is the one. 
And so we've got people doing waste audits, waste sorting, guest speakers, field trips, uh, food storage, making sure the food doesn't go bad, uh, and student presentations. And then uh, some really neat initiatives through water and air and energy. We've got one that we're looking at right now, a wind turbine uh, project that we're working with, um, water testing, filmmaking around these initiatives, uh, automating the machines uh, for air quality. So, oh my gosh, the creativity is incredible. So today we're um, presenting three uh, groups that have done some, uh, have been successful recipients of this work. And so you can see that uh, Jordan, you're gonna be up first and Jordan's from Strides and he's gonna tell you a little bit more about his work. And I love that you've done climate wellness, Jordan, because we know, especially in the high schools, eco-anxiety is hitting 50% of our students. And so health and wellness uh, is amazing. Uh, Patricia and the team from Davisville will be talking about their many grants that they've gone through. And then Sarai is going to be presenting the Too Good to Waste um, uh, workshop or work that they did at Woolburn. And Woolburn's another school that applied many times and have had grants over, over a number of years. Okay, so, whoops, this is where I stop sharing. And over to you, Jordan. Uh, thank you, Pam. Hi, everybody. Um, so my name is Jordan Francis. Um, I work with the Education and Community Partnership Program. We used to be called Section 23. I'm a high school teacher. I've been teaching for, I think this is my 15th year. Um, and as part of ECPP, um, I'm passionate about kind of mental health for students. Uh, and also I enjoy physical health and outdoor education. Um, so our program is located uh, within Winston Churchill near Kennedy and Lawrence. Uh, and our program serves, again, high school kids age, uh, I guess, sorry, grade 9 to 12. Um, and they have many different interests and passions uh, and take all sorts of courses while they're here with us. So um, kind of how did I get started? You know, what kind of brought me to this? Um, I had a really good outdoor ed teacher in high school, and that is what I think kind of made me want to become a teacher. Um, and so I like the outdoors and feel like it can be very therapeutic. Um, I had heard about um, the Youth Climate Action Grant through Direct Line. So teachers out there, I, I encourage you every week, check Direct Line because there's always awesome stuff on there. Um, and so I met with Pam just to kind of learn more about what the, the Youth Climate Action Grant was about um, and then thought about it and wondered, would there be a way to bring plants into our program and classroom specifically as a part of the grade nine science curriculum? Um, so again, kind of thought about it, talked with Pam, um, and then brought it forward to our students to see if they would be interested. Because again, a big part of the grant is it's student kind of led or, or student run. Um, and so when I was talking with my students, um, and I'm going to read off two, two quotes here, like um, Pam said that, uh, again, kind of climate uh, anxiety is a big thing. And me being older, maybe kind of disconnected a little bit from how my students are feeling about it. So uh, when speaking with the students, two quotes I had was, uh, one was climate change makes me feel anxious because ultimately our generation will have to be the ones to deal with it. I feel powerless to do anything about it. I don't want the environment to be destroyed for us and future generations for its own sake. If we don't take care of the environment, animals and plants could go extinct. Um, and another quote, we could learn responsibility by taking care of plants by giving it what it needs every day. It helps out climate change by reducing carbon emissions or greenhouse gases. Maybe if we plant some of the plants outside at school or at home, it could help out the environment. We could teach family and friends how to take care of plants. We would feel proud of ourselves because at least we tried something to help the environment and seeing all of our hard work pay off to help the planet grow or the plant grow. Um, so speaking with my kid, my students, they, they were on board. Um, so kind of some of our goals specifically for the grant were we were gonna um, grow plants indoors, um, grow local native plants in partnership with the Toronto Region Conservation Authority. And then the goal was to grow them. We started just after March break and then we were gonna plant them in the Meadowway, which is uh, close to us. Uh, we would also care for plants indoors um, to help reduce CO2 levels. Um, 
again, in supporting those plants, we uh, used a vermicomposter with worms. So that was really cool um, to reduce, again, the need for synthetic fertilizers. And then kind of big picture, again, connect the classroom grade nine science curriculum and activities with green experiential learning opportunities uh, with the Toronto Region Conservation Authority, um, fostering an appreciation among future generations for environmentally sustainable practices. So, um, kind of, I worked on the application. Um, again, Pam was amazing in kind of supporting me, uh, put it through, uh, and we were able to get it. Um, uh, kind of reflecting back on the the experience, um, growing the plants, uh, the kids really enjoy it. You know, they would come in, we kind of, kids were responsible for different days or different times, kind of spraying the plants with water, checking them, making sure they were okay. Um, so just to see the kids come in every day and kind of peek and see, and then if there was a sprout or a flower or a bud, kind of hearing the excitement in their voice was really cool. Um, and then I think to going, uh, again, the day we got to do the planting, um, you know, to see the kids excitement, to know that they were going to be planting something or contributing positively to a, a local green space and that, you know, maybe in future months or years, they could come back and like, Oh, like, you know, some of those plants are maybe here because of me. Um, I think uh, really impacted them in a great way. Um, some challenges um, uh, or just some speed bumps along the way. Some plants grew better than others or some didn't sprout. Um, so again, just, you know, the more you try and grow, the more likely you'll have success in some way. Uh, and then again, the challenge of March break of who's going to kind of water, take care of the plants, but we're very lucky here. We've got some great custodians. Um, the biggest challenge for me, I think was purchasing. Um, and I think that's more of a TDSB in general <laughs> challenge than specific to this grant. Um, so just advice to, if you are approved just to get on the purchasing part as soon as possible, because, uh, things, you know, vendors can be out of stock and things like that can happen. So just try and get on that as soon as possible. Um, so again, kids enjoyed the, uh, the plants also, um, when we had the, um, and I forget the name of the organization, but, the the group that set us up with the vermicomposter, the kids, um, took a, a, a real affection to the worms and kind of like when kids talk about like puppies or cats, they kind of go, Oh, but like there's lots of like, oh, as for the worms, uh, which was kind of cute. And um, certain students would, would bring in or uh, bring in kind of vegetable scraps or fruit, banana peels um, and ask how the worms were doing and kind of like peek in. Um, so I thought that was really good. Again, building that those kind of relationships for for animals or other creatures that maybe we don't think of or don't think of kind of affectionately or kindly towards. Um and in terms of like overall impact, again, just hearing their excitement in their voice, I think kind of the the room became kind of warmer or greener or kinder uh, with with the plants uh, in the room. So I think just an improvement in overall kind of temperament. Um, and so, yeah, it was it was really good. Um, again, uh get on the purchasing and then also speak with Pam. She's amazing. She helped us kind of every step of the way that she wants us. She wants you to be successful. Um, so she was great with resources and ideas and helping me with my grant. Um, so I think that's it uh, in terms of kind of the spiel. And then I'll just share my screen here to share some photos. And I did not pay Jordan to, to have those <laughs> plugs, by the way. Um, so here was kind of our setup with the local native plants from the Toronto Region Conservation Authority. Uh, and they were kind enough to provide us with the, the lights and the seeds and the soil and everything. Um, so we just had that on a timer. Uh, and again, the kids would make sure to kind of spray and make sure that they were wet. And as well, kind of there was some water underneath for the weekends. Um, so just a, a closer look there. I think we had wild bergamot. Um, there's two other ones, which I'm having a brain cramp on. Um, but again, the seeds were provided by the conservation authority to make sure that uh, everything was going to kind of play nicely together. Um, this was also in the room. Uh, we grew uh, other plants. Uh, these were kind of the take home ones for the kids. Um, so we tried different vegetables. 
um, and flowers as well. So again, just the you know, oh, I can see a tomato or oh, I can see a bean or look at that. Um, so it was always great just to kind of hear their excitement and interest. Um, so these are pictures taken on the day where we went to the Medaway to plant. So these were plants uh, that we grew in the classroom uh, and the staff again were great at kind of leading the students through the activities in the afternoon. So there's some of our students with our CYW kind of planting. And then the kids also got, I, th I think they were called seed balls, but it was kind of fun that the kids all, again, like the seeds in the dirt and the clay, and they kind of packed it together in three, two, one, and they all get to chuck it um, into the field. And again, just helping kind of the plants grow there. So that was a fun, I'd never heard of or seen that activity before. So just some students holding the seed balls. Um, again, just a, a photo from the Medaway restoration, just kind of explaining what's going on there. Uh, and then these were some, um, in terms of reducing the greenhouse gases, um, some plants that we purchased to stay in the classroom that the kids take care of as well, just to reduce the greenhouse gases and kind of brighten up the room as well. So um, I think that's it for me. So I don't know if there's any questions or if I hand it off to the, the next presenter. Great. Well, I, I'm just so thankful. That, I mean, you talked about building relationships and I, I think that's so important as we build empathy with that which sustains us we're shifting our mindsets and that's so important uh so thank you jordan that was great um we will take questions for jordan because he's got to uh, head out to another commitment i i do see some things in the chat yes worms who knew that worms relationship with worms are going out with handwriting who knew um <laughs> And we've got uh, Brian, thank you. The Plant Market in Etobicoke offers workshops. And we're so appreciative because this is a skill that growing food and growing things is something that's often lost. And it's so joyful when uh, students of all ages get to participate. Any questions for Jordan? How to get high school kids involved? Um, I have a question or maybe a, a comment, I'm not sure. Um, I'm at General Career Art Public School, which is right across the field from Churchill. And I wonder if your students would like to do an opportunity um, of presenting to our eco team, how you guys did whatever it is you did with the Medaway, because I know we partner with them too. And um, it would be nice to hear from high school students who've been go going through that experience and giving them the leadership skills to, to actually present to our students. Um... Our program's only one year, so all the students that would have been with us have moved on. Um, but I, I would be happy to, and I, th I think um, we did kind of uh, the workshop. They might have been with us there the, the day we planted in the Medaway um, that day. But uh, yeah, I can, I'll can i throw my email in the chat, Michael, and then you can shoot me an email if you want. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. And uh, that's really important, that mentorship and seeing other people have done that work. And yeah, uh, thanks. Um, great project. Um, so my question was, um, did the students have an opportunity to reflect on what this project meant to them and what they learned from it? And if so, what came out of that? Were there any surprises? I'm just thinking of all the co-benefits of a project like this on their mental health and connection to each other as well as their connection to the natural world. So thanks. Yeah, um, I think so. Um, again, I just I feel like, you know, the opportunity to take care of something else uh, maybe helps you get your mind off your own stuff. And, and that can be therapeutic in its own way. Um, I think, again, that that sense of control, again, with the climate anxiety, that the fact that, it, you know, it went from like, I feel like I can't do anything to like now I have done something um, and to see something grow and flourish through care and, and time and effort, I think was really impactful. Um, the space in here looks greener, looks nicer because of the work the students did. And, and that's kind of a lasting legacy or impact that they hopefully feel good about. Um, and again, I think just the, the, the smiles on the field trips, um, and the shared experiences, you know, when they would talk about it and, and smile or laugh, I think, uh, to me felt like kind of a success. Um, and the kids got to take home some of those, those other plants. Um, I hope they're still growing. I don't know. Um, but again, just, uh, again, like a physical manifestation of, of kind of 
you know, if you put the time in and the effort to see the the care and the growth and the flowering uh, it was really positive. So I think plants in the classroom is great for a number of reasons. Thank you, Anne, for your question. Great. Thank you. And thank you again, Jordan. Uh, we hope to see uh, another grant heading our way uh, for next year, <laughs> but we will let you go. All right. So next up is our Davisville team. Uh, so glad that we've got not only teachers involved, but we've got parent council people involved. And I see David uh, is here as well. Uh, so principal support. Um, so if you would introduce yourselves uh, again, I, I can make stuff up, but it's probably better that you <laughs> tell us who you are. All right, Patricia, take it away. Thank you so much, Pam. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for this invitation. We're so um Pleased to be able to present this to you today. So I know Diana is probably just getting our uh, slides uh, ready. She's going to share her, her screen. Okay, thank you, Diana. We'll go on to my slide. Thank you. Okay, so my name is Patricia Heath, and I'm uh, currently a kindergarten teacher here at Davisville. <laughs> and um, one thing that I really like to do is I like to um, bring 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 people together to try to work towards a common goal and building a sense of community um, in the process. Um, I really like to see um, a school, like a whole school community working together towards a, a common goal. I think it's, it really makes me feel like there's been great accomplishment there. My name's Teresa Samuel. I'm an early childhood educator at Davisville, passionate about finding ways for students to express their creativity. And it happens a lot in kindergarten, but I love to see it in the building as a whole. Um, I also have a passion for caring for the environment and for teaching children the importance of taking care of our natural world. So good afternoon. My name is Diana Oriano, and I am a parent and until last year, an active member of the Davisville Parent Council. It is my goal to reduce waste and to communicate to others that our choices have an impact on the environment. It is important for me to share with you um, Davisville journey in which we had a school, um, it was falling apart, that we had to relocate to about 20 minutes away from here and the entire school had to be bused, you know, before, before about three years before we were allowed to come into our brand new school that unfortunately then got affected by COVID for about two years. Um, the Youth uh, Climate Action Grants, we applied for five, but we actually received three out of the five. Uh, that did not stop us from still going through whatever initiatives that we had, even though we did not receive the, the funds for the other projects that we had in mind. We received zero waste in which uh, Patricia was kind enough to um, help with it a lot. And uh, uh, Madame Samuel, who took on more than she probably needed to uh, and help that project get started. And for active transport, uh, unfortunately, that teacher was unable to come across, but she was um, uh, helping a lot. Um, the grants were parent driven uh, as an initiative of supporting teachers, um, particularly because um, a lot of our clubs were affected during, you know, moving to a new school and coming back. And a lot of the teachers that used to run these programs either moved or retired that we, we wanted that experience for the students to come back to enrich uh, um, and to be a part, you know, to know that they were a part of the community and to have connections with other classmates. So uh, for the zero waste at Davisville, the observation was that COVID interrupted whatever initiatives previous SNAC um, program coordinators had started. Uh, there was a large number of single use plastic items. There was a lot of food waste. And of course that came with a financial burden for the program. 
Uh, there were some complaints that uh, in some classes they were saying there wasn't enough snack, you know, as it was previously. So the interest was to support the snack program, uh, to free up some funds, to increase the amount of available snack for students, uh, to reduce food waste by increasing litterless snacks. In addition to that, we wanted to engage and enrich the learning experience uh, of students at Davisville through the Eco Club. And collectively, we would then reduce greenhouse emissions you know, providing leadership skills to the junior grades. Uh, so we did ask for $1,000 to get uh, 20 hard coolers, ice packs, and our commitment was to deliver literally snack to the ground floor in the classrooms. And I am sorry. That's okay. Uh, and we have also all right. we implemented the green and blue bins at the school, and we ran some eco-community events and... We did a couple of uh, student-led literacy assemblies um, that we presented to the student body and some educational workshops for the junior grades. Um, for our upcycle club, uh, a couple of our students noticed that there were students in the yard who weren't dressed appropriately for the winter weather when it was really cold out. Um, we have an increase of new students to our school who are a lot of whom are from countries where they're not used to the cold weather and they just did not have the clothing when they arrived. Um, at our previous school, we had a community closet where people could uh, donate and take things as they needed in terms of, of clothing. And when we moved into our new building, we no longer had that closet. So it was a need in the community that was missing. As I said, I, I love creativity and I was already running a knitting club. Um, and when this grant opportunity came up to also add sewing to our creative endeavors, it was it was something I couldn't turn down. Mm -hmm. um, the student who or the two students who started this grant process realized that there was a huge amount of textile waste going into landfills every year. And one of our goals with this, um, this grant was to teach people how to reduce that textile waste and greenhouse emissions. Um, the, the grant was able to engage and enrich the learning experience and the skill set of students um, in our junior grades and also students who, who asked if they could join from the school that is attached to us, the middle school uh, spectrum alternative. So we were actually able to include two schools um, in this project. Um, what was coming up here? Yeah, so for the grant, we requested $1,000. We purchased two really good sewing machines with that and the supplies to go with them. And it also included partial funds for our community closet. We fundraised for the rest of that. Um, we taught the children how to repurpose old clothes to make new things that were still useful, taught them sewing and mending skills through using the sewing machines. And we were able to educate the wider community on these things at um, demonstrations at our community clothing swap and our fun fair. Uh, the students also led an assembly to engage and inform the student body of the progress of the school initiatives and the things they had created. Uh, so we set up our, our upcycle club in the library, our wonderful librarian, Mr. Hanna, who thankfully could also use a sewing machine, <laughs> taught the kids how to sew and helped out with projects such as making no-sew bags out of old t-shirts, making t-shirt yarn that we use to make bracelets and headbands, and learning how to sew drawstring bags. And they were all super excited about it. Uh, the active transport at Davisville, um, their observation was to increase overall health and wellness for the students. Um, they wanted to re reduce uh, the students' environmental footprint. 
Uh, so the interest was to support students who didn't have access to bikes and scooters, you know, um, to repurpose outgrown transports and to reduce the waste and greenhouse emissions uh, by engaging and enriching the learning experience, you know, by gaining these skills. Um, so they uh, they asked for a thousand dollars mostly for helmets but their main goal was to get workshops into the school for the primary grades and their commitment was actually an educational community event which we all shared uh to teach junior classes to learn how to ride a bike and the road safety uh, uh to service the donated bikes and scooters before finding a new home and of course we had to tell everybody about how we did it. Uh, so April is our big eco month at our schools. It is supported by the teachers, students get excited about, and we parents do a lot of work for this, for this <laughs> month. So um, we did by week. So week one, uh, we did ask for a grant for the Ecotronics. Unfortunately, we did not get it, but that did not stop the student who was really into computers to collect batteries, to collect old cell phones, iPads, you know, 11 laptops and iPads. One of them he managed to repair. And it is my understanding that he kept the repaired one and donated his older one, you know, back out. So uh, week two, we dedicated to active transport for the community to donate uh, bikes. We received 24 bikes, three scooters, and they were all service, you know, prior to the big swap event. Um, week three is a, this is an activity that the person who was uh, doing our garden club, a parent that was highly involved in the garden club, had run for the entire 10 years that so she was at Davisville. She would get the classes excited to um, do this contest to see who could bring the most books from their home that they wanted, that they no longer needed and they wanted to donate. And this particular year, we had over 700 books they were all then displayed and divided and she resold them to other students who would not otherwise have access to them um, for between a dollar and five dollars. Uh, and the funds were then redirected to the gardening club. Uh, and last year, she particularly um, encouraged uh, one of the students from the upcycle to make bracelets, to sell them at her bookstore uh, in order to increase funds for the community closet. So um, she sold about $100 worth of bracelets, $200 were made. So that was one great initiative from her part. Our big community event happened on April the 29th. I should be mindful for you to know this was a Saturday. And, um, um, do you, you want me to do this? Thank one? you. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. Um, so we held our big annual clothing swap and, uh, we still had some books left over from the book sale. So we sold a, a few more books as well. Uh, clothing was donated by the community. People could come in and fill up a bag for $5 and take home whatever they needed. Um, it was an incredibly rainy Saturday and we were really concerned that people weren't going to come out but they did um, a lot of people came out a lot of clothes found new homes and our upcycling club did a demonstration to show families how to make no sew bags out of old t-shirts um, Rhea who was one of our students who um, put forth the idea for the community closet uh, talked to people about the amount of textile waste that goes into landfill every year. And she was also asking for donations for a community closet while she was doing that. Great. And also um, we um, did uh, part of that community community event was um, literalist lunches. And here you can see two students uh, teaching someone in community how they can reduce uh, uh, wasteful um, food in their fridge to uh, have less waste. Yeah. And okay, and so the gardening club, the gardening club, um, as you can see, there were plants. They took them out to the community, and uh, from the World Wildlife 
we receive uh, seeds, which they went and gave out in lieu of donations for the Garden Club, who we did not get um, funding for. Uh, and as usual, they grabbed the lavender, they made them to sachets, and they resold them at the book fair. Um, this is their waste audit. Yes, and because we re-implemented the green bin, we were able to enter a contest and we were uh, um, awarded with a vermicompost from Eco Schools, which we still are using in one of our classes today. Yes, uh, our little snack are up and running at least once or twice uh, a week uh, on average. Um, and... and we did finally get our community co closet up and running and the handles on the closet doors. Thank you very much, David. Um, and so now we have a space where families can come and uh, get things that they may need, that they may not have, um, and people can donate things that their children have outgrown. Yes. So what was the students' experience? They were excited to participate at lunchtime and get ready for that assembly. They were most excited about the game portion of the presentation. And due to their commitment, Davisville Parent Council provided them with treats and time on the rooftop. Um, this is the student-led assembly for grades one to three that happened in our foyer and the big assembly that we had going on during, you know, for the grade fours and six. Um, moving forward, the University of Toronto uh, trash team is coming to the classrooms um, between February 27th and April 30th, uh, in which they're going to meet uh, educational curriculum incentives. Uh, the nutritional program, they're committed to reducing food waste and single use plastic items. Um, the challenges, well, we no longer have a very active council, but uh, that only means that it just won't be as fast for future years. You know, there is lack of volunteers, literally snacks well implemented on average twice a week. Volunteers remain low. New parents are not participating. So we hope this changes. Now the achievements, these grants uh, have increased students' confidence, empowering students to be a part of the solution for climate change, support students and engage people in the community. Recommendations, no man's an island. The collaboration of teachers, students, parents, members of the community have been imperative to succeed. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Phew. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how you fit that all in and teach and take care of your kids and, and, and. Oh, my goodness. Um, just because of time, I'm going to not have any questions for your team, but quickly swap over to Soraya. Uh and we'll be sharing for sure the um, slides so you'll be able to see all this amazing work. Okay, Soraya, take it away. Okay, I'm just gonna share my screen. So the Youth Climate Action Grant, Too Good to Waste. Hello, every hello everyone, my name is Soraya Fabro, and I work at Woburn Junior Public School as the core French and primary music teacher. I have over 20 years of experience working in many schools across the city. I have been involved in eco clubs for more than 15 years, including, including co-leading the virtual eco club with Mich Michelle Marchiori while teaching virtually in LC3. I am actively involved in the eco club, leading Walking Wednesdays, the Golden Light Bulb Award, the Community Garden, and the Too Good to Waste project through the Youth Climate Action Grant. Through my passion and love for the environment and animals, I foster a love, wonderment, and an understanding for our planet with the students. My gentle and positive approach gets the students excited about helping to make a difference in the world around them. <clears throat> Wilburn Junior Public School is a K-6 school located in, in the Markham and Ellesmere Road area. It has about 330 students. Many of the students come from India and Sri Lanka. The students are respectful and they have strong cultural, religious and language connections at home. The majority live in the apartment buildings near the school, including Toronto community housing. The students are passionate about the environment, Minecraft and playing sports. That's my mistake. Last year, the Eco Club was promoting litterless lunches and the students noticed that many did not have reusable containers. 
A survey was conducted and the data showed that only 13.5% of students didn't have reusable containers. We wanted every student to have a reusable lunchbox, so we applied for the Youth Climate Action Grant. We also wanted to give back to the students, back to students who needed lunches, and we looked into supporting Schoolbox, a school organization helping Indigenous students by fundraising to support them. This will be part of our Truth and Reconciliation Commission call to action. Last year, the students created a brochure called Eco Eats to inform families about healthy lunches and reducing food waste at home. This is a work in progress as we want to include more information for families. While writing the Youth Climate Action Grant, we expanded our waste reduction efforts to include the lost and found items and school supplies which were being swept away at the end of the day. Morning announcements were written and read about the lost and found items and not wasting school supplies. The Eco Club students wrote and created a skit from the parents' perspective about the lost and found, and the video was played at the assembly. This year, this year we are be beginning to see a decline in the items that are misplaced. My colleague, Fortini Furia, created this slideshow for parents about the lost and found items. It was shared with them by email from the principal. We encourage parents to label their child's belongings to save money and to help the environment. We also encourage parents to support our school by purchasing Mabel's labels. My colleague Fortini and I completed the application together. After submitting it, we received an email that it was conditionally approved because the city wanted to see a larger educational component to our project since that would promote a real change in people's waste reduction habits. Pam Miller kindly offered to look at our second application and we were allowed to resubmit it for consideration. We were awarded the full thousand dollars on June 1st, 2023. Even though we had a setback with the application, we didn't give up and expanded our project to meet the application criteria. We are continuing to work on waste reduction education, starting with the Early On Child and Family Center. The center is located in our school, and the director asked me to present a lesson to the children as she wanted them to learn from a young age how to recycle. After listening to a story about recycling, they practice putting items into their compost, recycling, and garbage bins. I got feedback afterwards that the children, children were looking at the posters before putting things into the bins. After conducting the waste audit this fall, the students created this triple bar graph to represent the data and presented the graph at the assembly in December. I displayed the graph on our Eagle News bulletin board. I also shared our waste audit on X. I attended the school council meeting on January 18th where I explained our Youth Climate Action Grant to our parents, what we had accomplished so far, and what we were planning to do this year. Each month, the Golden Light Bulb Award is handed out to the cleanest classrooms, taking their compost to the sorting station, cleaning up their classrooms before home time, and conserving electricity. The Green Queen, AKA yours truly, will often present the award, making for a fun part of the assembly, which the students love. They always cheer loudly when their class wins the award and sharing it throughout the month with other class winners. So far this year, we are trying to purchase the seven hours of circular fashion from Fashion Takes Action for the junior teachers. We purchase Mabel's labels for the clothes we lend out to students. The actions we plan to do are having Project Neutral do a virtual presentation to our junior, junior classes this month and getting the Eco Eats brochure to families by the end of the month. This year, a grade five Eco Club member proposed an Eco Fair where we would sell reusable items that we made. I suggested including Woburn CI and St. Thomas More Catholic School in the Eco Fair as they are part of our community. I want to also bring 
in other community environmental organizations who can share their knowledge at, at the Eco Fair. In May, I will be sending out a parent survey asking if their waste habits have changed and how. What we learned so far is that communication is the key to a successful project and growth is slow, which takes time and patience. Ask for help and build a connection to your, in your community as people are eager to share their knowledge or connect you with someone who can guide you in your project. For our next steps, we're going to focus on guest speakers, the Eco Fair, and the Spring Waste Audit, as well as getting feedback about the Eco Fair and Parent Survey to understand the community's environmental shift. Some, rec some recommendations would be to include an educational and community involvement component in your grant proposal, as well as asking Pam, Jen, or Chris for guidance in writing it. Involve parents in large events as, as they have a wealth of knowledge and it fosters community and belonging. We remember to thank everyone individually who has helped you along the way since gratitude and recognition goes a long way. Thank you. Oh, amazing. <laughs> and I know you practice because I don't know how you fit all of that also into 10 minutes. <laughs> Just incredible. <I> <laughs> um, I am going to quickly share my screen just so that you don't miss anything. We have some upcoming events uh, on March the 7th. Uh, the School Board Climate Action Plans. Toronto District School Board is one of four across the country with a climate action uh, plan. And so we're going to be looking at that and a couple of others. And then on March 27th, we're going to be looking at earth and climate education uh, and hopefully uh, lead us into April Earth Day and Earth Month doing some great things uh, with our students. I am so thankful um, for the folks being here today. And uh, again, thanking our teams uh, from, uh, let's see, Jordan from Strides, Davisville, uh, you brought everybody. I'm so thankful. And Soraya, thank you for just making everything just flow so well. And I, these projects just blow me away. So it's not me. Uh, I know my name came up a couple times, but really it is these people who work tirelessly. You're teaching your students, not just about the world in front of them, but how to interact with the world around them. And uh, we, we're just so thrilled. So thank you.